Well, I'm going to make prints. Okay, they're called collagraph prints, and what differentiates collagraphs from other types of printmaking, like etching or woodcut or lino cut, is that the, the plates are actually constructed in materials. What I use is acrylic, and the, the, the base is actually matte board. Matte board is the type of material used to frame and present uh, works on paper. But what I do is I basically take matte board to make texture on here for grabbing. I take to the matte board. This is one where I have to go have anything drawn or, or, or placed on it. I take thin gesso, which is actually a type of round for oil painting canvas, and then I fit it with water and I apply it very evenly onto a piece of mat board. And then while it's still wet, I take a type of sand material called carborundum and I sprinkle it on top. And so I'm embedding these particles of metal into the wet gesso. And when it dries, it becomes very rough. And so to, to make sure that the particles do not come off, I seal it with another coat a thin gesso, and I basically make my own sandpaper. In print making, carbon resin is used for another thing, for grinding limestones to erase the images from lithograph stones. It's also used to grind glass. I imagine it could be also used for high pressure to, to do like sandblasting. So the whole point is it's abrasive. So when someone feels an unaffected piece of mat board that has carbon resin on it, it feels just like sandpaper. So if I were to take printer's ink and apply a, a, an area to it, and I would wipe it like an Italian, it's called, it's called Italian printing, when you're taking ink and, embed, and, and basically forcing it into the crevices of the plate, it would print solid black. But to make a discernible image, you can take some more gesso and draw and paint with it on top. And so the more gesso you apply to the, to the surface of it, the more you apply to it, the smoother it will get. So basically, it's like drawing that you cut with charcoal and then you draw with an eraser. This is absolutely flat. So everything you see that's in the, the lighter color is the areas of the block that I painted out with, with more gesso. And the more you apply, the smoother it will be. So that when you apply etching ink on top and you wipe it, wherever there's more texture, it grabs more ink, it's darker. And wherever it's smoother, it's lighter. I actually, I came upon this type of medium, this print making medium by accident. My professor, Don Skaggs, he did a demo where he actually was using found stuff and trash. And so when he printed this, it turned on a light. I thought, this is for me. So I ended up, luckily, getting hired here at SPC and being here for 25 years and constantly teaching printmaking. So what I'm going to do right now, I have this piece of mat board that I've Carborundum, very similar to this, except after I did that, I took more gesso and I basically just applied it with a card on top and I want free texture. So what happened that while it was so wet, I took this lino block, it's a linoleum block that I carved a skull into, and while it was still wet, I impressed it into the wet gesso. And I created prints that way. So I made prints for a plate that I'm going to make a print from, see? And then the thing about it is I keep going. And then down here, while the lock was still full of residual gesso, I printed it again to make negatives. So I got positives up here and I got negatives down here. That's how I made this. So this is really tight, but this is going to be really loose. It's kind of like a paradox. And then after I... I'm going to Italian wipe it, and then before I run it through the press, I'm going to place this lino block. So this is actually carbon linoleum. I'm going to place it into a little window. So that's going to be simultaneously printed. I'm going to do a process called sheen collé, which means I take a little piece of colored paper like this, and I'm going to apply spray adhesive to the back. And peel it off, put it on top of the block, and then with a piece of paper on top of that, it's going to simultaneously print from the ink. And this is going to be collaged onto the paper as well. So I've got a bunch of ink over here mixed in. It's black ink mixed with blue, like a blue-black ink. So now I'm going to take this ink and apply it to the I've never printed this before. I don't know what. See, often when you're doing collagraph printing, when you're doing something this loose, you often don't know what you're going to get. This is a brand new plate. I don't know what it's going to look like. So when the ink's on there, what I'm going to do next, I took, uh, this is a dauber. This forces the ink further into the crevices of the texture plate. It's basically made from felt, wool felt, that's used for the, the press, for the press bed. And so I made it into like a thing like this, and I'm going to force it into the 
infection. Then after I do this, I have to wipe it with polyphen. This ink, it acts like a lotion, but the neat thing about this ink made by a crank field, it's not the relief ink, it acts like oil-based ink, but it cleans up with soap and water. Now that this product is available, it's been a godsend because you don't have to worry about having to use solvents to clean up. You use soap and right? water, you use soap and water. No, you don't want it to draw. No. It's not going to. You know, the funny thing about these types of the, the prints themselves, what I like to do often with the finished print is come back in and, and hand color and water color. So now I have thoroughly paint the entire plate right here. Now I, I can't print it yet. I have to wipe it. So this is the reason why a lot of people don't like printmaking, especially this one. You get real dirty. This is what I gotta do now. If you yeah. like, if you like process, this is for you. If you want immediate results, this is not for you. So I'm trying to get rid of, of residual ink. Because if I if I were to run into the press, it would be very, very dark. So there's a little bit showing through here, but I'm not through wiping it. Normally what you do is you, you wipe it with the can off in one in one bunch of carlton, then you gotta go to another one and like more. Some people use rubber gloves. I probably should but it's a touchy feely thing too. If you have rubber gloves on you can't feel. I think it's ready to go. Before I do anything though, I need to use it. But you can also do this with your hand, take out the plate from it. you can't do this with gloves on. It kind of polishes the, the the smoother areas. It'll print lighter, actually. And I'm going to take it and put it on the press set. I'm going to take this lino block and I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to place it in the little window area on top of the, on the plate. I got black relief ink right here. So this goes in onto the, the block right here. I'm going to take a piece of Japanese paper and I'm going to spray some adhesive on it and put it on top of the, the screen block. And then when I put the paper up on that to print it, it's going to simultaneously uh, it's going to collage onto the paper, onto the, onto the print, basically. Okay, what I gotta do now is try to get paper. I, I got paper that's being soaked in water to basically soften the fibers of the paper that allows me to print it nicer on the water. So I've got bath piles over here. I take the paper and I lay it on top of the template. I put the blankets on top, and I'm going to run through the press, and you can adjust the pressure by moving that dial right there. You run through the press, and it's kind of squeeze it together, and hopefully apply enough pressure to make a good print. Wow. It worked. Ooh, the paper is white. the yellow. I think it's suitable for framing. I like it. I, I, I'm using my own worst credit. This is a nice print. I think I'm going, when this dries, I'm going to sign it and I'm going to frame it <laughs> and put it up in my house. So for this one, I have two segments. This is like a mountain shape. Thing that, I, that I've created. This is a, a sky. It's going to be a sky. And then I'm going to ink this up in a different color and then Italian white this one. And then at the same time, apply relief ink before I print it. And the two things are going to run together like a puzzle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Italian white this with the same blue ink that I used for the previous one. It's probably more ink than I expected on the bottom there, but I'm going to go ahead and see what happens, okay? So I'm, going, I'm now going to apply a split fountain. See, a split fountain is a re relief type ink that has a couple of colors. Green on this side, blue and white blue on this side. And I'm going to relief roll it before I print it. 
So then this goes on the press bed. And then you have too much glue on it, but yeah, we'll just see what happens. That's a lot of blue. Looks like snow in the mountains. Thank you for sharing. Oh, well, thank you for watching. And thank everybody here. I thank the library and Gina, everybody else that was here to, to witness this great event.